Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at how to implement notifications using Safari 6 and JavaScript. So, this is something for web developers. Using JavaScript on your web pages, you can use the Mountain Lion notifications feature along with Safari 6. It's just a matter of knowing the right JavaScript to put in there. So, I've made a simple example. So, let's look at the code first. It's a very simple HTML example. I have a script here in the header. Of course this would be in a .js file normally. And I have two functions that I have defined. The first is going to ask the user's permission to send them notifications from this web page. And the second will send a notification. Then I've got here at the bottom just some very simple uh, links here to trigger either one of these. So the ask function basically it will send to the console here just the permission level. Uh, so I can see uh, what the permission level is. Now there are three different permission levels you need to be concerned about. First one is the default which means that the user has never done anything to enable or disable notifications from this page. So it's what you're going to get the first time the user clicks this. Uh, the second is denied which means they've said no. And the third is granted which means they're going to allow notifications so notifications will work. So. Uh, I'm just going to output that there. Uh, that's not part of the regular code of course. This is uh, testing window.notification tells you whether or not the browser has the ability. So if somebody is going to a browser other than uh, Safari 6 right now then um, the code inside here won't work. Um, and then the key thing here is notification.request permission which will basically put up the little dialog box that we'll look at soon that asks the user if the web page can send them notifications. It has to have a function in here as the parameter. So in this case I'm just going to create a simple function that sends again the log to uh, to the console here so you can see that they've changed it. So the per perfect thing would be that it starts off saying default and then this time it goes in and says granted. Now the second function is to actually send a notification. And this will also test for window.notification. It will log the permission level as well which should be granted. Now here I'm testing the permission level and so it should be granted in order to continue. Otherwise this next command won't have any effect. You use new notification to create a notification and then the parameters are pretty straightforward. This is the title of the notification. Then you have this object here and it has to be an object. Uh, with different parameters in it because this is all optional. You could just send the one for testing. But in this optional set of parameters you're going to have body which is the actual bit of text that will display underneath the title. So you want to have that of course. That's the whole point. You also want to have something called the tag. So the tag is just some sort of number or keyword that you'll use to identify that notification. Now this is good because it prevents multiple notifications being sent. So in this case I've called it test zero. If the page for some reason uh, sends test zero more than one time it's not going to list it multiple times. So basically it's an ID for the notification. And then you can have various functions that uh, react to events. So you can have on click, on show, on close, and on error. Now on click is what happens. The user gets the little alert and it says close or show me the notification. And on click is what will then happen when they select that. So I think it's the most logical one to use uh, for something in JavaScript. But on close would be when they dismiss it. Um, and on show is when it just simply appears. And there may be a delay. The system may not show it immediately. So it's good to have that callback. And of course on error self explanatory. So I'm going to have that callback. And let's go and take a look at what happens when we go to this page in Safari 6. So here I am at this page in Safari. And I've got my two links. So let's try the first one which is going to ask permission. You can see it comes up with a dialog box here. I can hit allow or don't allow. And I'm going to hit allow. And one of the things I want to look at now is under preferences and notifications. I can see it now lists MacMost and has it set to allow. I can set it to deny. I can remove it. So that's the settings in there and it shows that the asking permission worked. Now I'm going to hit send notification. And there it is. It appears on the right as a notification. And if I click on it, it will run that alert, that function that had that alert in it, um, and show what I wanted. So it kind of reacts. It's like if you put a notification out there, something's going on, the user goes over, clicks on it, and then your web page reacts to that. Uh, of course, in system preferences under notifications, they could change how Safari shows them. 
alert. So they can also go to the alert here rather than the banner. And if they do that, then send notification will change. And you see it comes up here with the close and show. Close will do nothing. Um, send notification show will then actually act as if they clicked on the banner. So a few things. First, I still find this a little bit buggy. Uh, when developing this simple sample script, I ran into some times when Safari just kind of ignored it, um, and I just quit Safari, restarted it again, and it worked. So that should be ironed out soon. Uh, the other thing is, when do you use this? Well, it only works if the web page is actually active and open. It's not like you can have somebody accept notifications and then reach out and send them one when they're not at your website. So for pages like uh, pages that have chat windows or pages that are video conferencing or perhaps a page that's a multiplayer game, it's useful because you can have JavaScript send this notification and if the person isn't looking at their Safari window or perhaps it's in another tab or it's hidden, um, they'll get the notification. Whereas if you did an in-page notification using JavaScript or something else, um, they might not see it because if the page isn't open they might not see it there. So it's useful for that. It also could be very useful in developing uh, Safari extensions and developing applications that have JavaScript embedded in them and you want to use notifications and it supports the whole WebKit thing. So you've got a lot of different options there um, and I'm sure in the future we'll see some interesting uses for it. For instance, I could see uh, implementing it at MacMost, perhaps asking, you know, having a little link saying notify me uh, when you visit MacMost and there's some new security information. And then if I post a new article about some new security threat uh, next time you visit MacMost, even if you're looking at a tutorial on something completely different, you'll get a notification saying, hey, there's an article over here that you really want to check out. So that's one possible use for it. We'll probably see a lot more uses over the next months and years. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.